Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Adam from Vineyard Worship, where we gather, train, document, and inspire so that you can lean into your calling and vocation as a worship leader. And this is what I'm asking for today. Heather and I are doing another Ask Us Anything podcast here in a few weeks, and I'd love to include you, your question, and your voice. So here's what I'm hoping. Could you make a short audio voice memo of your question? Be sure to tell us who you are and where you're from along with your question, and we will include as many good questions in the episode as possible. It'll be a fun way to hear from lots of different folks from around the nation, and who knows, maybe around the world. So get in a quiet place, make a short voice memo, and email it to us at info at vineyardworship.com. Again, info at vineyardworship.com. All right, team, let's go. If you want to live a life that engages the cultural moment now around sexuality, around race, around voting, around COVID, around mask and not mask, I mean, whatever, you know, whatever you want to throw in the pot, it's all confrontation and people are polarizing and the media is doing what it's doing. If you want to show up and go, but how is Jesus? He would be right in the middle of all this, wouldn't he? Yes, he would be. You know, if you want to be able to stand in the middle of that, you have to learn just that one tool of being differentiated because that means I can sit with the other and like have a conversation and not feel like I'm losing it and how dare and I can't hang out with and they're not on my team and they don't love me. And you can have friends that live a lifestyle that are totally different than you and go, I love you and I'm connected to you and you know I disagree with you. Welcome to the Ferment Podcast, conversations about worship and transformation. Today's guest is Annabeth Morgan. All right, what up, everybody? Adam here. This is the Ferment Podcast, and my friend Annabeth Morgan is back on the pod with me. You're back. I'm back. You're back. Post, I don't know. Post COVID, about sort of. <laughs> well, I was actually thinking we should maybe back up a little bit more because you were one of my first guests. This is true. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I okay. So maybe I'm getting this wrong, but I think since you've been on the podcast, I think you had another baby. I did. Is that true? That's true. Tell everybody. That's true. I did. I have a son, Miles. He's and how old is Miles? Two and a half. What? Yes, yes. And he is very, well, we call him Frank the Tank. Yes. Because he's huge and he he's has beefy. beefy and he also has a very party like personality already. Yes. So. Well, one of the things I've noticed about both Jovi and Miles, <laughs> they're both parties. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that my, doesn't always happen, by the way. No, I, I was kind of praying that one would be like Kyle, my sweet, quiet, introverted, shy, all the things that attracted me to my husband. I was like, oh, we'll have a kid like that. <gasps> I think they're both highly extroverted. Yeah, so the Morgan household now is three <laughs> extroverts and one introvert. Totally. Pray for Kyle. Hashtag pray for Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> he will be so glad you said that. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I'm an introvert. Are yeah. you kidding me? It's probably totally. one of the reasons your husband and I get along so well. Mm. Yeah. True. Introverts true. unite. Yes. Okay. Well, I, we had to do that. Totally. Yeah. Life oh, has happened. Life has happened. Yes. Um, say something else about Say something else about being a mom worship leader with two little kids. Because I've been noticing actually this on our worship leaders page on Facebook. Mm. I'm seeing lots of more moms with several kids yeah and they're reaching out to each other well it's because I remember when I was younger leading worship and I didn't have kids but all my friends did like these worship leaders like Noel Shearer people I respected a lot and they would talk about how it's weird you have to have like your brain splits almost in half and it's over here thinking about a set list while you're mothering your children and I was like I don't think I can do that. Well, I didn't, I couldn't do that because I didn't need to be able to. And so it's a different mix to say, okay, I have a two year old and a five year old. They very much need me still. Like they're not making their own meals. Like Miles is learning how to potty, right? You know, there's, there's real things the, the little kid is doing that rely on me, everything they're dependent on me for. So you feel like, oh my gosh, you lead worship and your kids rely on you and you have more than one. How do you think about doing the week and pastoring people or putting said set list together? Or just, do you ever sit down and play your guitar or play your piano? Yeah. You know, like how does your life look? And you're looking for ways to be creative about time 
because your time is taken up so much by being a mom, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah. And so I think that's why we're like, woo, I see another one. Let's, let's talk about how this goes, you know? Yeah. And just, I don't know if this is a gift. I can't quite figure out if I think it's a gift or it's hard, but either way, when most of the time when kids get hurt, they, they gravitate towards mom is going to nourish me. Mom is going to nurture me. Mom is going to, and they love their dads too. Like my husband's awesome, but you are kind of needed, you know, in this, in this sacred space of them needing you. And it's very important to like show up in those moments. And I want to show up in those moments, but this job of pastoring and worship is also a sacred call. And so I don't want to feel like I'm either giving energy to one, ignoring the other, but I'm not exactly balanced in both. I'm definitely like the teeter totters, like, well, this week it felt weighted this way. You know, like yeah. right now I'm sitting with you yeah. in an event, right? And so it's definitely weighted towards my job this week versus my kids this week. And so there well, has I think that's really beautiful. And I'm glad you framed it that way. Yeah. This is different. This is not about being a mom or a parent, but I have several jobs. So I do the vineyard worship thing. I do the vineyard Campbellsville thing. I'm a dad. My kids <laughs> play soccer. And sometimes people ask me, well, Adam, how do you do it? And I tell them, I do things a week at a time. Yes. Like sometimes I'm a really good pastor. And then sometimes I really bust it for a week in vineyard worship. And yes. then I take the kids to the mountains and we just divide time differently. Yes. Yeah. I don't know how to do it any other way. Me neither. Because I can't get the right balance every week of doing everything. Mm. I literally always fail at something. Mm. And it's like this mediocre in the middle version. It's like, well, I did a little here and a little there, but I didn't give like passionately full present Annabeth to this thing this week that needed to have that sort of attention, you know? So and it's, then it just, gets... it's the season of life, though. Yes, for sure. Well, I'm, I, I wanted to start there because I know there's a lot of moms who are leading worship. And I just wanted to say shout out to the moms. Hey, we love you moms leading worship. That is right. It's a big deal. And we don't want you to stop leading worship. No. If you need to, go for it. But like, if there's a way, man. Stay in it. Stay in it. We need the moms. Yes. Okay. Well, Annabeth, that's not really what I wanted to talk about. (laughs) Great. I'm fine talking about that. We can can do kid stuff. Um, What I wanted to talk about this week is... I was wanting to talk about being an emotionally healthy leader or being someone who is a part of an emotionally healthy team. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk to you about this because you've talked to me about this so much. (laughs) And I know that there's a bit of a history on these topics at the Vineyard in Denver Mm -hmm. that Jay and Danielle have really led your staff into these areas and into these encounters. And so yeah. could you just tell us what's happened at Denver or, oh, or some of it? Totally, you know? totally, totally. Yes. I'll tell some of it. And then when you see a spot, you jump in. But, of course. Because the story is massive, right? Of emotionally healthy leadership. But it in Denver, I remember the first taste of this that I now can look back and go, oh, this is where this really started to like, it wasn't like Jay and Danielle got us in the room and go, okay, guys, we want you to be emotionally healthy. They didn't set it up and say, so here's a job description for the emotionally healthy person. Go for it. Here's the books to read. They did start to resource this like, hey, let's read this as a staff, this Jim Harrington book, The Leader's Journey, you know. But Jay is a very like take you into battle with him, like more caught than taught. Right. Definitely that value. And so he started we were in guys the building we had at this time, like something wasn't working. There was nowhere to meet in it. And we met in a lobby of a hotel, like a nice hotel in Denver. We were just like, let's hang out in the lobby. There's Wi-Fi there. Like you can you sit on the couch. There. No. That's hilarious. Yes. Yes. That, so that is <laughs> so, that's guerrilla warfare. So, totally, it's so good. Totally. Okay. All right. I so, already like this story. Right. So we're in this lobby at this nice ho- hotel and it's Jay and our staff and there's like six of us. And they don't us. know that you're not staying there. Nope. No, they thought we were a group that was staying there, right? But we all have our computers and our yeah. things out, you know. And Jay looks at us and says, hey, we're going to do an exercise together. I want you to kind of split up around the lobby or wherever. You can go have a drink in the bar, whatever. Yeah. But I want you to write everyone's name down on a piece of paper. And I want you to write the thing you can count on them for the most and the thing that you don't feel like you can count on, count on them for at all. And I remember just going like, 
I'm going to need a drink. Like, like yeah. immediately it was like, what is this exercise? Because you have to understand there was no, like, again, there was no softball law that goes, this is how you become an emotionally healthy person. You tell people truth about, you know, like what's so for you, this sort of language that we yeah. use sometimes and emotionally focused or whatever. And so we started this exercise and then it was like, we come back. He's like, you get 20 minutes. Cause if I give you too much time, I'm like 20 minutes, I, you know, I need to think, I want to say it just perfectly. And no one has anything negative. I can't count on them for. Yeah. That's not true. And you know, so we're sitting there, we come back. Then it's like, Annabeth, we're going to start with you. And I'm like, Oh gosh, I'm not going to be able to hear anything. These people can say they count on me for, cause I don't care about the positive. I yeah. like to just hook my teeth into the negative so I can like beat myself up and then work on it, you know? Yeah. But the grace in it was like, you really do want there to be a theme. So it would be awesome if everyone said different, wonderful things, but there was a theme about the one thing people can't count on me for versus like, what if all seven people say seven different mm, negative things? Mm. And I'm like, oh, 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 I'm being shot over yeah, and over, right? And I don't know how to describe this to you, but like something happened where I didn't go first. It wasn't my turn. I just, that's how I kind of went around and did it. But it yeah. was like, people didn't cry at the thing they couldn't be counted on for. It was like the weight of the encouragement of hearing, like, I always know I can count on you mm. to intercede and pray for me and come with, come with things God's showing you without me even asking you to pray. Like you're, you just are good at that. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you noticed. I do do that. You know, it's like, it's affirming. It's almost this well done, good and faithful servant moment. And those things were covered in so much weight and goodness that even when they said, and you know what? I just, I can't always count on you to like respond quickly. Like you're not great at like your email and even texting. Like you don't really feel like a need to respond to anybody, do you? And you're mm -hmm. like, uh oh, like I don't RSVP to parties. I don't, you know, yeah. all these things, right? And so this, he was, building a culture of trust that was like the foundation for us to really do work with anxiety and how do you show up when anxiety hits because it's not a matter of if anxiety it's always when anxiety is like gravity mm -hmm. anxiety is a force on the earth that all people deal with and i don't know about you but i was raised that you were either an anxious person and you struggled with anxiety yeah or you were not and i convinced myself i'm just one of those that never struggles with anxiety yeah I was so freaking blind, like mm. the biggest blind spot ever. Mm. And so it just began to unfold like this. Well, I want, I want to stop right okay. here just for a second because I have like 10 things in oh, my mind. Okay, great. Yeah. So I could imagine that would be fairly rattling. Oh, rattling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But I, I think the language that we would use, at least from like family systems, and I'm thinking of even episodes that I've done on this podcast, like with Steve Cuss or with Trisha. Taylor, who wrote the some book, of the, best. the leaders. Yeah, some of the best, right? Yes, yes. That part of that exercise you guys were doing is in some ways, it's kind of a 360 deal. So we can see ourselves from other people's perspective because we just, we don't always know. Sure. And this helps us become what we might say differentiated. Yes. People can say what they see from where they sit. Yes. Right? Yes. And then you're also allowed to say what you see from where you yes. sit. But that requires a lot of trust. You use the word trust. But at the beginning, it's like, it's taking your breath away a little oh, bit. Yeah. You're like, they don't like me. That's the meaning you make, right? It's mm -hmm. like when someone disagrees with you or much less tells you what they have a hard time with, like we use language, what they can, can't can count on you for, you know, it's easy to just go, they don't like me. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to be defensive and also go like, I'm not like that. Or it's easy to go shame spiraling. I know I'm like that and I'm terrible. I don't even know why I'm on this staff, right? Like a, a plethora of emotions. But what that highlights most is it's like, hey, we're all growing here. And the where the trust is built, so you use the word differentiated, the biggest part of differentiation is the ability to say where you're at and remain connected. connected. Yes. And guess what we did after we did that exercise? What's that? We had dinner at the restaurant in the hotel together. <laughs> and no, seriously. And yeah. it wasn't like we're like, we all got a drink now because we feel terrible. No, we just had a family meal together yeah. and we laughed and we didn't talk about that exercise again. We like hung out because we're friends more than just staff workers. And like, that's the remaining connected. So like, I can look you in the face and say, I disagree. And actually I need to tell you this thing. Like yeah. I, you don't show up on time. It's 
uh, to anything. And so it's very hard when I ask you to come and do worship because I don't know if you're going to be 30 minutes late or you're going to show. Uh, it starts to make me wonder and then go, hey, but I love you and this doesn't affect our relationship. I can still be with you. I can still be connected to you. Instead of the, I don't want to tell this person I can't look them in the eye. Like yeah. if I tell them this, they're going to get mad at me. And what if they quit the worship team? Or I just carry passive aggressive thoughts towards you. Oh, well, that right? too. Like, like resentment. Totally. Right. All the totally. things, all the unspoken stuff. Yes. Yeah. So what happened to your team? So you, you have this exercise. It's an exercise in trust. It's an exercise in learning about ourselves, mm. positive and negative. Mm. What happened after? And then you have the meal. Like, what would you say happened in the next like three or four months? Did anything change? Did the tone, did the feel of your team change? I will say, and this could be a wiring thing. So there's mm -hmm. grace that people listening to this are like, oh, you're definitely this on the Enneagram or something. Yeah. For me, yes, things definitely change. But the places they change the most is, you know, when you walk into a room and you don't realize you subconsciously do this, but you walk out and you're like, I wonder what they're going to say when I leave, you know? Mm. Right? That doesn't, ex it doesn't have a space to exist because you're like, they've told me some of the hardest things they can, they've said it to my face. Mm. So I know if there's other hard things, they may wait till next year when we do the exercise again or next quarter or what, however the rhythm goes. But for the most part, I can trust these people are, have my back and they're going to say the good and the hard. So that changes a room when you know, like I can trust that when I walk away, other than someone choosing to sin and just gossip because they really are and have told me what what is so for them to my face about me. And so that changed the way the rooms felt, like just st weekly staff rhythms. The other thing that changed, though, is we're pretty practical. So it's like, hey, we can talk about all this. Like you and I can talk about being differentiated mm -hmm. and never be differentiated. We can say, mm -hmm. oh, I know the definition of that. Like, oh, I know when we did this exercise and they told me all this stuff they can't count on me for, but I just kept being the same person. So where does the change actually happen? oh, well, there was a theme in this stuff. So then we have other pastors on our staff. They're like, hey, let's talk about the feedback you got. So you had a meeting. It's like, hey, here's feedback I got. What do you What do you think God's inviting you into to, to change or to form better or to get clearer, whatever the need is? How do we make a plan for you to grow in this thing that was kind of coming up for folks that they can't count any for? Mm. And do you want to, this is also like emotionally healthy leadership type language, give your word to the changing. Mm. And you're like, I do want to give my word to it. But I, it's again, the most humbling part of this stuff, Adam, is like you're flexing muscles you've never used before. So you're going like, I don't know. I think this is how you flex your bicep. But, ow, oh, and I just did that. Now it's really sore. Do I have to do it again? Like this is, as an adult, we don't like to learn new things for the most part. We like to like, stay pretty good at the good stuff that we're like are mm -hmm. sure about and stay away from new stuff that we're like, I may look really bad when I do this. And there's no way to look clean cut and good while you're trying to become emotionally healthy, period. You will be messy. And so the next four months was between the staff, just aura, cha aura changing. That's a very yeah. Denver word to say, but seriously, <laughs> right? It's very bolder. Yeah, right. Very bolder of you. But it, it, then the plan, I love the practical plan because then I'm going like, I can actually maybe change. How does confession lead to like me showing up more? Oh, well, because I get stuff backed up in me that I just need to confess to the Lord. Like, Lord, I feel shame filled around this and this. And next thing you know, I'm clear about what I want to give yeses and nos to. Confession yeah. gets you real clear about that. And that's just the discipline of confession. It is. And man, the Bible says some amazing stuff about confession. In the scripture, it says, <laughs> if you confess your sins to the Lord, he'll forgive you. But here's where it gets weird. It says that if you confess your sins to one another, you get healed. Totally. I th which is so interesting. It is. Well, it doesn't. Yeah. It feels both too good to be true and too hard to be true. Yeah, it is weird, isn't it? That like that, that there's some aspect of our healing that is wrapped in being able to say to one, to one another, well, this is where I'm weak. Yes. You know, not just to God, but to another person. Totally. I'm, this is where I'm weak. Yeah. I, yes. I, by the way, I think that's most of the magic of therapy. Mm. I believe in therapy. I believe in like yes. spiritual direction or like meeting with a pastor, any of those things. I think that's where most of the health is. It's, it's confessional in nature. Mm. And so you get healed. Yes. Well, and then like, you know, another pastor on our staff, definitely what came up for them for a little while was, I just can't count on you to like show up to meetings that we have scheduled. 
it's like you 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 either are trying to hold it all in your brain all the time, right? It's like, oh, I have my calendar. It's in my brain. And it's so easy when someone says, I can't count on you for that, because then you just go, I have to be a disciplined person that uses a calendar for a while. Yeah. Like I have to, even though it goes against everything on the inside of me, I do not <laughs> want to put it in a calendar. <laughs> I like spontaneous living, you know, whatever it is. But yeah. I'm not showing up for stuff that I said I would. Hmm. And and actually, I oversee this section of the church that matters a lot. So I need to show up for this. Hmm. And you go, Okay. I, oh. I give my word using a calendar. I mean, it's it can be that practical. Yeah. And it can also be as spiritual as I'm giving my word to practice confession regularly. Yeah. You know? Well, part of what I hear in this little story and even in this idea of this sort of emotional health is that the culture becomes more honoring, but it also becomes more confrontational. Totally. And, and I don't and I and I know that the word confrontation has a lot of negative heat on it. A lot of, lot of baggage. Totally. So how do you manage pursuing emotional health, having a culture where the staff can be honest, mm -hmm. but it, where it's not just like we beat people up? Totally. Okay. So this is, <laughs> this is like trying to get the right mixture of everything. But uh -huh. the reality is this. There is no right mixture. And just like we talked about in the early beginning of the podcast with kids, like I give a lot of energy to work this week. So then my kids kind of, but then the next week I take my kids to the mountains and they get, you know, it's the same with emotionally healthy leadership in that when you would think like, yeah, if we start giving confrontational, like this is what I can't count on you for. And oh, by the way, you hurt my feelings with this and this and this. You're like, I just nitpick everybody to death. Yeah. No, because something happens in you. When that honoring piece grows and the trusting piece grows and all of a sudden this like tree of love is growing deep roots inside of you to where you're like, I love these people more than ever. And you, you grow this like arm of grace where you're like, I don't need to call them out on that. I'm actually not that upset about it. That actually triggered more of my insecurity. And I don't, they don't need to know that what they said made me feel insecure. I need to go to the father and say, what is this insecurity in me? And you start to discern more clearly, like I can let this go. And you actually become more grace filled, mm -hmm. even as you're becoming more confrontational. Those two things feel like they don't go together, but it's like, it's like when you have death and loss and you realize that grief is sitting here, but joy is sitting very close to grief. Yeah. And you're like, I didn't think that I could find joy in the midst of grief, but I can. And the more mature I get and the more understanding of how loss and suffering works, I probably will always hold joy and grief close together. Mm -hmm. I can hold confrontation. Let's be honest. Being a leader, you're being confronted all the time. Like mm -hmm. if you can't, we don't like the word confrontational, but the, here's the reality. If you're going to lead, people are going to be mad at you. And that's confrontation. Mm -hmm. If you are truly going to state where you're at, someone's always going to disagree with you. And that is confrontation. But as I become more like emotionally mature or even just settled and trying to be more emotionally mature, it feels like this big bucket of grace fills up for people. And I can like, let things go because I'm not as anxious on the inside. I'm not like the loaded gun that I'm all on the inside ready mm -hmm. to fire all the time. Yeah. I'm actually at peace with myself. Not yeah. like in some Zen weird way, but I'm at peace with like, oh Lord, I know what I do when anxiety hits. I know I project anger all around the room. Mm. Like if you want to know an Anubis really, really anxious, see what she's blaming others for. <laughs> Are you being confessional right now? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Ask Kyle. Yeah. Kyle's like, oh, Anna was blaming me for how I loaded the dishwasher. She must have had a stressful day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like something as simple as that. Yeah. No, that's that's really that's really insightful. And that is the stuff we need to know about ourselves, isn't it? But I but I do love that that you're helping us see how confrontation also is in some ways a doorway to a big old bucket of grace. I think that's what you said. It is. In actual love. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's not this weird, okay, so there's this weird worldly thing that says, like, because I love you so much, I fight really hard with you. It's not that. Yeah. Like, people are so afraid, like, if we become, if we open this can of worms, we're going to become just critical and we're just going to, like, pick at each other and and we're not going to you know or like guns. or like even even in a somewhat in a, in a maybe a more extreme sense like demanding and spiritually toxic yes like perfectionistic yes you know that's a cuz that's that would be that would be 
terrible. Yes. And no one wants to live there. No. But instead, people are secretly living there anyway on the inside with this unresolved pain and unresolved anxiety. They are nitpicking themselves apart and then they're pissed. Have you had this? I've had this. So let me, let me tell you a story where I show up terribly. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, great. So first come on staff at Mile High. I've been there 10 years this summer and there's a drummer there and no joke. It is like, he won't listen. You know, I, I'm like, Hey man, I'm giving them direction and rehearsal. This is where I want you to come in. I, I kind of want you to do like the beats on the two and the four on the kick. Like I'm really giving him direction. He's like, cool, cool, cool. Well, he would never write anything down. He never brought a chord chart. And here's the worst part. He would show up. He would listen to what I'd say. We'd get it in rehearsal and he'd do whatever he wanted to in the service. And I'm like, why am I giving this dude direction? It's like, and so then I would ask questions, trying to assume the best, like, hey, are you having a hard time remembering what I say? Why don't you bring some chord charts or I'll print them off and you can make notes and just look over and go, oh, come in second verse. Whoops. Okay. You know, and he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you're playing like totally different stuff than what we talk about in rehearsal. And it's kind of driving me nuts. Yeah. Okay. First off, I shouldn't have said the last part or driving me nuts, Mm -hmm. but I had no equipping the first year of being at mile high around emotional health. So he's just feeling attacked. And I don't know anything about what differentiation looks like. The minute he starts to feel attacked, the more I start to be like, Oh no, I gotta, I gotta back up. I gotta back up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, you do whatever you need to do and it's fine. And I should go back on everything I say. That's actually me leading him. But then I can't look him in the eye. Like I'm like, I don't even know if he wants to be scheduled with me. I start doing the, like, avoiding, like, the plague. because I Oh, totally. It's distancing, right? That's another way anxiety, people show up in anxiety. They just distance from you. And it didn't go well. Because then when I went back towards him, he was very hurt by me. But I was like, dude, I don't understand why you're being so emotional. You're the one that's not playing drums well. It was, And it's because I was making it musical and not emotional. You can't do that everything's emotional for people. Talk to me about that. That's that's an interesting observation. Okay. Unless you're like a studio musician for a living and it's somehow you just know, like I show up, I play the thing I'm hired to do, like a machine. When you're dealing with normal human beings in a church, whether they're paid to be your drummer or not, they're humans with emotions. And whether you think, hey, I'm just talking about something technical, doesn't matter. Because guess what? They're still making meanings out of what you say. We are meaning-making machines. Therefore, when you look at them and say, hey, why don't you write stuff down? A meaning he made was like, you think I'm stupid. So when we go to talk, he's loaded. He's like, you think I'm stupid? And yeah. did it. And I'm like, I didn't say you're stupid. Well, then I'm feeding the fight. I'm not, I'm not humbling, right? So yeah. many things are happening. And then I avoid him so he can make even more negative meanings. He's going, hey, listen, like... Did I do something wrong? I'm like, no, I just feel like you hate me now, right? I mean, this was... So you made your meaning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And and the thing was, I'm like, hey, can I just remind you, I'm talking about like playing drums. I'm not talking about your personality. I'm not talking about your capacity and your brain. Oh, but everything in him, that's all he heard. You think I'm stupid? You don't like playing drums. Like, you don't like playing with me? I'm like, how do we switch over here? Mm-hmm. And the Lord's like, that's how this works, Annabeth. You don't realize that like a pebble is like a boulder in this guy and you're t- completely inequipped to stay connected to people in conflict. You have zero skills to be differentiated. Mm. And so it has been really good work for me because this has been part of your growth edge. Oh, completely. Yeah. Not because uh, No, I, what would you do now? Okay, so let's say same guy. Same guy. Same problem. He's right. not listening to you. Right. Or He's just messing up. Whether totally. or not we don't even we don't even know if he's listening or right. not. Maybe he's trying, but he's just maybe he gets in the service and he's he gets nervous. There's yeah. three hundred people there and he's like, ah. Right. I and wouldn't now what would you do? Right. I would show I would turn around and say, Hey man, I need to tell you something. I I just I'm so grateful for the time you give and how you serve. And I find myself a little frustrated because somehow either how I'm communicating or maybe it's because you're not taking notes. I don't know what it is, but something's happening where I'm communicating and you're not playing what I'm communicating. And so how can I help you do that? And he may go, oh, well, I didn't know I wasn't doing that. Okay, well, would you mind? I'd love for you to take notes and see if that helps, right? And it would be in this sort of inquisitive stature. And I would never say like, because it's driving me nuts. The minute, <laughs> No, no, seriously. But the yeah. minute you say that, 
he took that very personally because I made it emotional. I'm like, because you're bugging me, yeah, right? It's, it's got heat. It's got heat on it. But the heat for me was like, you're just not showing up and doing the work of a, of a musician that I think you should. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, and I think, okay, so, hey, thank you. That was great. Mm. Way, to, way to role play Oh, there. by the way, yes. and I still like... I would immediately on purpose, this is a little over-functioning, but I would do this. I would say like, hey man, do you want to go grab a beer after service so we can hang out? Just because I know we've had a heated moment and I want him to connect to me on purpose or grab his wife and him and go, hey, let's get dinner. You you, you have to make a little extra effort because That's just pastoring. Absolutely. That's just pastoring. Absolutely. But it's even more important when you're going, I'm going to tell the truth and still show you love. (laughs) Yes. And that's kind of what differentiation is, right? I'm also wondering this. I think it was Steve Cuss. He said it on this podcast. He said that a healthy team is not a team that arrives at some place called health, but a healthy team is a team that's pursuing health. So it's not like we ever get to the magical land of we got it all together now, but a healthy team is on this journey. Yes. You know, you've told us some stories from maybe at the beginning of your journey. Like how have you guys kept pursuing your personal and team betterment. Yeah. So some of this, I mean, the granular answer for that first, before I get into where yeah. I go off on rabbit trails, you just become a student of it. Mm-hmm. Like you really do. You go, okay, I've put myself in this process of reading a few books and then I've put myself in emotionally focused where I'm experiencing and practicing. Right. So it's this program that a guy named Chris Knudsen runs. It's great. And it's all about emotionally healthy What's leadership. It emotionally focused emotionally focused yes okay and it's for the vineyard at large like that you know it's jay worked with jim harrington and they created emotionally focused Hmm. okay so you become a student and you put yourself in almost in a lab situation right where it's Mm -hmm. in front of you then you realize like okay i have a few few tools my tools i know that i project an anxiety I know that I overfunction a lot. You learn your own you learn your own own triggers and what you do that's right then you begin to expose your team, your layer. So that all I'm talking about is all the stuff, the staff, because Jay and Danielle mm-hmm. were like committed to, and they said, if we can get this in you guys, you'll get it to your teams and it'll just flow out, right? Okay, so then I start to test my team, right? And then I start to ask them, hey, how do you think you show up in anxiety? And then I'm like, hey, why don't you go through emotionally focused? And I push them through the same things I'm learning. Mm-hmm. But then what starts to happen is you you kind of go, not dormant like you don't practice it, but it becomes a little reflexive, and then you have family, like your actual family of origin to really test you, right? Like the people that installed your buttons and triggers, you know, you <laughs> this go is home. so true. It's true. You it's go true. home for Christmas mm-hmm. and you're like, I turned into a 12 year old again, mm-hmm. emotionally. What has happened? Yeah. I guess I didn't learn anything. And then. Well, okay. Okay. I got to yeah. just jump in here. Jump in. Because I think what you're saying here is really important. It's entirely possible for you to become more emotionally healthy with your staff oh. or your worship band, but then go home. And revert. Revert. Like com- almost to where you're like, I, I'm i I'm two different people. Yeah. You know, like multiple yeah, yeah. personalities. Yeah. Like there's there's Annabeth at home back in the South with her yeah. brothers and her mom. And there's Annabeth in Denver. <clears throat> Denver Annabeth is, feels mature and at peace. Yeah. Well, that's because everybody at home installed your buttons and they know exactly where they're located. And people yeah. in Denver don't always know that, right? Yeah. 
And so this is where the rubber meets the road. And let me be honest, when you can go into your own family, so where like this gets really tested for me still, when I can go home, home, like we did two weeks ago for spring break and leave my mother and leave my brothers and leave people that vote differently than me, that think differently about pandemics than me, like all the things, right? Yeah. And know that like, I didn't lose it. Not only, not, not you lose it, like yelling at them. Like I didn't even lose it. Like in the bedroom where I'm like, what is happening? You know, yeah. I literally was just <laughs> able to sit I'm with sorry them. To laugh. It's just, no, it's true. It's right. True. It's a hundred percent true. Right. Because yeah, that's what happens. You close the door, you, close the you look door. at your husband, you look at your wife. You're like, where are we right now? Right. What is happening? No, totally. Yeah. yeah you totally. start having those whisper you have conversations, those whisper you're conversations like, but you're gonna, fired up. Yeah, right. Just, you're yeah. like, <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and seriously, <laughs> It wasn't like I did it perfect, yeah. but but what it does is you go, oh, Lord, this works working its way deep into the soil of my heart. And then I think the next place for me is like with my own kids, if I'm honest, like I can already see my daughter, Jovi, who's lovely, just getting me, right? I'm like, because she stirs up my deepest insecurities because I'm like, you're wired like me and I know what's coming for you in the world and I'm sensitive and you're sensitive and I want to protect you from being hurt in the ways I was hurt, right? You just start to do this parenting thing. Overfunctioning. Oh, oh right? Yeah. And you're like, I'll just set her up with everything perfectly so she never has to struggle. That's not real. Like I would never say that, but that's what I'm overfunctioning and doing mm. out of anxiety in me. Mm. And then I, I quiet myself and go, Lord, what am I so afraid of? Right? Yeah. I have to ask myself questions again. And then guess what? Our team like just to go back to the team thing, like the work thing, like we just, okay, right now we're actively reading a Lencioni book called The Advantage again. Some are rereading it. Some people are going like, I never read that one. And we're reading a book again about family systems, but yeah. this is more about like organizational systems with a family systems bent into it. And we're students again. Yeah. And you know what it does? It always highlights something again to me like, right, I really need to focus on that piece. I will always need to focus on, even though people are like, I can't believe you're saying this, Annabeth, you talk all the time. I need to focus though on speaking up where I'm actually at. I love to chit chat. I love to laugh. I love to make you feel like what you said is important. I love to make you feel like you're exactly who God's made you to be. And I love to make you think I'm always on team with you. So somehow when I speak up and I go, I completely disagree it undoes all those beautiful things I just said I love to do with people. And so I will always have to say, like, I'm choosing in this moment to say what's so for me. Yeah. That's completely different than everyone else right now. Okay. Let me ask you a question here. Okay. What's your, what's your Enneagram? <laughs> well, there's debate. There's but, a debate. Yeah, like, there's it, a debate. Like today. What is it? Today. today. I'm, I'm, I'm a two with a heavy three wing. Two with a heavy three. Yeah. So, well, that would make sense then, wouldn't it? Because. Yes. Because twos do want to help. Yes. And it's hard for twos to say what's true for them. Yes. Yeah. We're very fused. That's yeah. That's our understanding of love is actually very codependent and fused mm. at our core because we take on your emotions. Some of this, and we can even spiritualize this, like Annabeth is prophetically wired. She discerns where rooms are at. She feels things, right? Well, I was getting ready to mention that a moment ago. Yeah. But, so that's spiritual. Yes, it is. Okay. And that's beautiful. But it doesn't serve me in being differentiated, yeah. like within my own like family workplace. The last thing my pastor needs is me to sit in a room and go, yeah, yeah, when I'm on the inside going like, no, no, no. Okay, so if it's okay, can you think of a time when you did say, you know what, I just need to pump the brakes and go, this is where I'm... Raising Anna my hand. Tr true Annabeth is raising her hand mm -hmm. and going... I want to make you feel like you're an important person. I want you mm -hmm. to feel like a winner. I want to speak mm -hmm. God's mm -hmm. heart over you. And I just have to put my hand up here and go, I disagree. Yeah. 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 Just, uh, I mean, you don't have to share anything no, no, super specific. I, no, no, but no like, specific. But yes, there, we were, we were putting a guy in charge of one of the churches as the lead elder and everyone on team, I, not everyone, they don't get everyone's, but, but the few of us that they wanted to know, everyone had already spoken like, yeah, he's great. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And I'm like, so I went away. I was like, Lord, what's wrong with me? I think this is not going to be great. And I 
they're going to ask my opinion and I kind of want to hide because I can't say it's going to be great, but everyone else thinks it's going to be great. So I must be wrong. That's, this is how this dialogue goes on the inside of me. Yeah. You're meaning making. You Absolutely. Mean. Right. Well, it's like gravity. It just, just everyone makes meanings, you know, in the gaps uh, in all. Yes. And you even make meanings, just, just non-emotional factual meanings. Like you tell me something, I go, okay, I believe exactly what you're saying and you must. And then there's always a little, you must be on the end. Like just start to pay attention. If you want to do one exercise, you're like, this is all yeah. new to me, Annabeth. Just start to like maybe journal little, have a pocket journal and write down meanings you make throughout the day. Like, mm. what are things you told yourself that people didn't actually say, but you added it to what they said? You're like, oh, oh, I don't do that. Oh, yes, you do. It's yeah. it's sobering. Anyway, this guy, so they come to me, you know, the leadership come to me. Hey, Annabeth, and I go, I know that basically he's already hired because everyone's so excited, but I just... I want to go on record. I I think I'm not saying anything about him. I just started hedging. I know he's great. I'm sure he's wonderful. But something in my gut and just what I'm seeing, I don't think this is a good fit. And yeah. so my vote would be for this not to happen. But I already know the majority of you are thinking it should happen. And this is a moment for me to exercise this. Everything in me wants to be on team and just go, sure, whatever you guys think, I trust you. That's what I would, that would be my cop out. I wouldn't say yes, because that would feel dishonest. I would just go, I trust you guys, whatever you think. I would sure. defer. Soften it. I would soften it and defer because it's so much harder for me to go, it's a no for me. Mm. Right? Yeah. And so some things happened yeah. and it didn't go great. Yeah. And and what happened from that, though, which I don't know if this is a good thing like to share. I don't want to sound arrogant, but I gained a bunch of equity. Well, and you gained confidence in knowing yourself. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I just gained equity. So now it's like, hey, Annabeth, we, we want to ask you early on in these processes as well because you've seen some things we haven't been able to see. Yeah. And we just want to, like, be faithful to that. Well, also, that's huge, A, just to learn that about yourself, to learn that for the team. Mm. That's huge. But then it's also, I think, fairly beautiful to see that you could be a dissenting voice on the team and be, still be on the team. Oh, totally. Like agreement is not a precursor to being on the team. Right. See, that's the beautiful part for me. Like, it's not just about creating a culture that's more confrontational, but it's a, it's creating a culture where there's more freedom for us to say what is so for us so that we can be on the team without, like agreement isn't what Ag keeps us? No, agreement is not the point. Just like fighting is not the point. Yeah. You know, there are moments where the whole room's like a resounding yes. And we see that. And yeah, yeah. yeah you know, there's a lot of those moments. And then there's moments where it's like, hey, I just want to go on record here yeah. to say what's so for me. And a lot of times I still, honestly, it's helpful if I write it a little bit, like in an email and look at it before mm. I speak it. Or I just send the email and go, hey, here are my thoughts. And this will be clear if I just write them. Right. So there's still, again... I don't know that this will ever be just reflexive for me. It yeah. will always have tension because I really love when rooms just all, can we all just get along and yeah. just laugh and have a good time? Yeah. I'll, I'll tell one story here. And this is not even necessarily about me, but I can't even, I can barely give any detail mm -hmm. because That's I just okay. can't tell the story. But there was a room that I was in not long ago and, you know, we we're just making some decisions and there was one person in the room who had another thought about a subject. Yeah. And everyone else is like, no, it should be this. And then this other person had another thought. It was kind of like to the left. Mm. And I was just so impressed that the person had just the intestinal fortitude to be like, yeah, I know. I love all of you guys. But th I just think this other thing, you know. Yes. And it was also very cool to see the rest of the room go, oh, well, let's talk about that. Whatever it is you see. Let's mm. investigate it. And no one felt any need to change their mind, and the team stayed the team. Yes. It was a really cool moment. I, in my adult life, I've, I've hardly ever seen it, if I'm being honest. Which is kind of sad, right? It is. It is. Because you're like, this no is one, the way it's meant to be. No one yelled. No. No one, no one lied. <laughs> no one softened. Like, we all knew where we were, but it was a, it was a very cool thing, mm -hmm. and I... I don't, I've been thinking about it for a few months even, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of, I, I don't want to feel like we're jumping out of something. But, no, we're good. But something that this is feels the most fruitful, if I'm honest, 
it's obviously fruitful for my worship team, right? If I show up in these ways, a non-anxious presence, they know like, Annabeth's going to give me feedback. Like, I don't have to sit there and wonder like, am I singing the right harmonies? I'll just look at you. Hey, let's, let's practice this real quick. Yeah. Versus like, you're doing it all wrong. Can you like sing and tune? You know, yeah. I know, it, but, but there's or just. Or say nothing. Or say nothing. Or you say nothing and, and, you're frustrated. Get, and you get angry. Or yes. Angry and you're or... like, can you just mute them? Can you turn down their mic where you don't hear them in the house? And yeah. uh, you know, all the weird stuff we do, because why do we do that stuff? Because we don't want to hurt people, right? Like that's usually the motivator. The motivator for not being differentiated is I don't want to hurt their feelings, usually. No but the matter. damage later is worse. But the damage worse. is what you're killing these people by being dishonest. Yeah. But the place that this serves me the most outside of like the team dynamic with worship and even just music and conferences, and I mean, all the things, is if you want to live a life that engages the cultural moment now around sexuality, around race, around Voting around COVID, around mask and not mask. I mean, whatever, you know, whatever yeah. you want to throw in the pot, it's all confrontation. And mm-hmm. people are polarizing and the media is doing what it's doing. If you want to show up and go, but how is Jesus? He would be right in the middle of all this, wouldn't he? Yes, he would be. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to be able to stand in the middle of that, you have to learn just that one tool of being differentiated because that means I can sit with the other yeah. and like have a conversation. And, and not feel like I'm losing it and how dare and I can't hang out with and they're not on my team and they don't love me. And you can have friends that live a lifestyle that are totally different than you and go, I love you and I'm connected to you and you know I disagree with you. Yeah. But the world is saying you can't do that, right? The yeah. world is saying you're either for me or you're against Teams. me. Teams. Yes, right? And that is where Jesus would go, hey, listen, when I showed up in the taxpayer's life, like scoundrel, you know, yeah. I invited him to come follow me, but I didn't strip him and say, you're no longer a tax collector t- tax collector, and you're no longer this, you're this and this. I just said, hey, come follow me and we'll figure out how all this works together. Oh. You know, oh. when, I, when he showed up in the prostitute's life, he didn't say like, yay, keep being a prostitute. But he also didn't say, you can't follow me until you say you'll never have sex again. You know, yeah. he didn't do any of that. This is differentiation mm-hmm. and deep connection. I mean, this well, is all over the scripture. Yeah, it is all over the scripture. And it's funny, you're telling those stories. And the image that came into my head is another NBA image. <laughs> Good. I've been in the NBA lately. Yeah, yeah. But something you'll oftentimes see at the end of games is you'll see like Steph Curry at the end of the game, like he's just smashed some poor team. And he'll go over and he'll see the other guys that he has just been playing. And he'll take his jersey off and he'll give it to the other team, right? Mm. It's kind of a it's kind of a metaphorical picture for what we're talking about. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Steph's not on the Oklahoma City Thunder. No. But he's got friends over there. Yes. To find and connect to. Yes. Yeah. Like, can you imagine a world like this? I it's mean, so beautiful. many times I'm like, I can't. Can I imagine a world where, you know, someone's like, I'm not going to stop being gay. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to stop doing this. But I share meals in your home and I feel completely welcome at the table and, you know, and we can continue. There's a wrestling still, though. It's not like we sit there going like, this is off limits. You don't talk about politics, whatever that saying is, you know, nothing's off limits and there's wrestling, but there's so much love in the wrestling. It's all okay. Like we're truly sister and brother. We're truly deep friends. We're, we're, I mean, how many families in the pandemic have like, divided over just really like what I would think is this is not worth being divided over. Oh, but you can't deal with your anxiety over whether I should wear a mask to your house or not. People are so people are so sad right now, but Annabeth, they're going to be so sad later. So sad. Yes. Like in two or three years, people who lost their family members over Trump or something. Yes. It's going to be sad. Yes. Yeah. And again, and there's tension in all this, right? There's so much tension. So much. So much. But that arm of grace that grows from this emotionally healthy tree that you plant in your life, it's or bucket, whatever you want to, it's huge. I mean, mm. it is, and it's always there with God filling it with his power, right? Like he's the only one that can pour grace out into us. But we have this like access to it for the world. And I don't know in a time that we don't need that more than right we now. We need it right now. Yeah, because the world is trying to get us to be um, teams, Polarized, yes. no nuance, yes. no questions, yes. no curiosity, just hard. Yes. Yeah. Well, hey, let's wrap up here because I know you're supposed to go play some music right now. 
<laughs> I'm seeing people swirl around us out here. Tell everybody maybe a book or two they could read. Okay. I would definitely say um, if you're leading a team, the leader's journey yeah. with Trisha and um, Trisha and Jim Harrington is great. It's really simple and easy to read. Mm -hmm. I think one, though, that's powerful for me personally, it's a book called Growing Yourself Up. I cannot think of the name of the author. That's okay. We'll put it in the show notes. It is insanely hard and good to read, though. Okay. Growing Yourself Up. And then if you're a business-minded person... Any of the Lencioni stuff in general, like the five dysfunctions of a team, like if you want to think about this from like the structure and you're really trying to build a structure of trust and emotional health for, for a business or for a church or for your team, the Lencioni stuff, the advantage, five dysfunctions of a team, mm -hmm. Friedman is the father of this stuff. Yeah. His books are hard to read, though. That's why yeah, I don't love this. They're, they're, they're more beefy. They're like more generation academic. to generation starts with like the Russian Revolution for like the first 150 pages. And I'm like, I'm lost. I'm lost. Right. Yeah. So so some easy ones. The Leader's Journey, Growing Yourself Up. Lincioni. Mm, Lincioni. That's a good That's a good reading list. Already. Yeah. Perfect. I have like 20 more. That's good. Annabeth, thanks for coming on. Thanks for I, having I just wanna, me. I, hey, let me do this. Okay. I just want to tell you. Okay. You're one of my favorite people. What? You are. Adam. I just love you. I love I you, love and you. I love your husband, and I love oh. your family, and I love your church, and I'm Thank just glad you. we get to do this stuff together. Thank you, Adam, for You're having welcome. me. I love you, too. Peace. Hey everyone, Casey Corum here, producer of the podcast. Thanks for listening. As always, if you've been enjoying the podcast, here's a few ways you can help us. First of all, leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice. This helps more people find us. Also, connect with us on social media. Instagram at the Ferment Podcast and Twitter at Fermentcast. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Peace.